Hi, my name is Lenchy Angel, and I'm here with James Knight, and we have some questions we're going to ask him today. James, you call yourself an integrative therapist. What is that? Um, it's a term that I created for myself. Perhaps other people are using it as well, but I've been in the healing arts for over 20 years, and I have a lot of education and a lot of certifications. So when a person comes and sees me as, um, as their therapist, um, some of the things that I do is I am a psychotherapist. Uh, I'm a certified uh, core energetic therapist. I'm not licensed, but it's a unique specialty because I actually touch people and we get more into the emotion, excuse me, more of the energetic and the physical experience. It's very cathartic. I'm also a Hannah somatic educator. And uh, so I see a lot of people that have chronic pain issues um, that I help one-on-one -on -one with the table. I also am a yoga teacher and a meditation instruct instructor. So I lead classes and I also do private classes. I am, I am an aquatic therapist. I do Watsu. Um, and I'm also a body worker, massage therapist, in which I have a lot of training in various different forms. With all those offerings, I, uh, my clients have options of things that they can do with me. So for example, we might end up starting with a body work session that may end up later starting more of a therapeutic, uh, more of the core energetic you know, relationship. And that might end up turning into more of that somatic, kind of somatic education. So um, I, I switch between those depending on my client's needs. Beautiful. How did you get into the field of healing arts? It's kind of a wild, crazy ride. <laughs> when I was um, younger, I was being groomed to be a professional baseball player. Wow. Yeah, so from six, six years old until 16 years old, um, I was, honestly, I had scouts out for me when I was a teenager, and I really felt like that's what I was going to do, you know, that's what I was going to grow up and be was a baseball player. Instead, when I was 17, I became a ski instructor, and I really enjoyed being on the mountain, and um, truth is, I had a fake ID, so I was getting into bars, and so after, you know, the whole ski crowd, after skiing, we would go to these clubs and these bars, and uh, there is Elite from New York was doing the Face of the 80s contest. They were looking for fresh faces, and one night um, I joined this contest, and I didn't win, but I came in second. And it, that this is really, I know this is a, this is kind of a wild ride to share this, but um, I became a model, and so all of a sudden I was off to Paris and really you went to Europe as a model? I went to Europe, yeah. In your twenties. In my no, in my teens. In my I was eighteen, nineteen. So it was quite the shift, you know, from this baseball. from baseball. <laughs> yeah. You know, to skiing and then um, when I was in Europe, um, I st started really discovering myself. Obviously I was raised very, very um, very Christian oriented and when I was living in Europe it was nice to be exposed to different belief systems and different styles of living and so I really felt so blessed that I was <clears throat> excuse me exposed to whole to more of the global consciousness so I, I found um, when I was modeling that there was that was the first time that I think I could I think I had a, a sense of a spiritual longing you know without identifying at that time because I was so young so I left Europe and came back to California, um, hoping to start college and see if I could en engage more of the, my, my intellect, you know? I wanted to learn more now. After I was exposed to Europe, I was like, God, I, want, I really want to educate myself. And I was so fortunate because in my junior college, I took this uh, cultural anthropology class and the teacher asked me if I wanted to go to a Native American ceremony. And it was run by the Pomo Indians. Pomo. And um, so I said, okay. And I didn't know that we were going to be the only white people there at the ceremony. And it was way back in the hills up in Northern California. And we sat in the shadows of this roundhouse where they were doing this acorn festival. And the shaman, um, at the beginning of the ceremony, walked around with some bay leaves. And he went all the way around. We're getting chills as I'm talking about this. It's still, it's still like blows me away. As he stopped in front of me and he said, would you like to lead the first dance? And he said, pick two bay leaves and I'll share with you what to do. And so I, I looked at my teacher and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? You know, night, night, I guess I was 20 years old at that point. And so I led this dance with all the Native American people. I was in the front row and we danced around this huge bonfire. And I'll never forget it that 
I thought if there is a God, if there is a spirit, it is here now. You know, being barefoot on the floor with the fire and seeing the, the fire flickering on the faces and, you know, it was this bird dance. I was, there was I can't explain it. It was just this moment of like, wow, I feel so connected. And that really influenced me because I felt so connected to the earth and connected to the people there. And so that... You were never the same. I was never the same. And I feel really fortunate because I was so young. You know, I was raised Christian and this was such a different experience. So I started apprenticing with him, which was again another really high honor. Um, I had a friend invite me to my first 10 day silent meditation retreat. She made me, her name is Dorje, and I'll, she made me a meditation cushion and I just said yes. And I found myself there at this retreat and the men and women were separated and it was non-denominational. It was more of a technique called Vipassana and the teacher's name was Goinkaji. And so for 10 days, the men and women were split up into camps and I was taught how to meditate. And you know, there's a whole other story around that, but I can just say that it really affected my life because I, I had an awakening of in bliss. I had, I had an experience of everything being integrated and all there was was love. And that really, having a true experience like that really shaped the rest of my life to this day and why I'm so passionate of wanting to share this experience with other people. Mm, that's beautiful. So can you tell how Eleanor Criswell Hanna influenced you? Was she your teacher? Oh, thank you. Yeah, she, um, so I went from the junior college to Sonoma State University and I took my first somatic yoga class. She taught the somatic yoga class and I knew nothing about yoga and I loved it so much that I took her class almost every semester. So we became friends or, you know, acquaintances and um, she kind of took me under her wing and she started asking me questions about what I was doing in my life and she said, you know, you might consider getting your massage certification because I feel like you're really good in this field. And her husband, Thomas Hanna, um, unfortunately he passed in 1990, left this legacy of Hanna somatic education. And she was, she took, she actually formed a school to help people learn about Hanna somatic education. So she was kind of nudging me saying, if you take your massage training, then you could take this certification. And she felt like I would be a really good practitioner. Um, so we became closer, um, you know, a closer, we became closer in relationship and I took her advice. Never thought I would be a massage therapist. Never thought I would go into the healing arts, but it was just a natural evolution, you know, from my previous Native American experience and the meditation experience. So um, yeah, she took me under her wing. And then eventually when she turned department chair, I think at that point I was getting my master's degree in eco-psychology and she asked me to teach her classes, her upper division psychology classes, because her responsibilities increased being the department chair. So I found myself um, teaching psychology of yoga, psychology of meditation, and eventually psychology of uh, the wilderness psychology and then eco-psychology. And eco-psychology is just the psychology of the ecology of the world, the planet, or what is it? Um, it's eco-psychology is the study of human and nature relationship. And um, the question is, how can we as human beings harm the planet? Like for example, why would we go into the rainforest and clear the rainforest knowing that we're helping to create species that go extinct? You know, knowing that there's this interdependence that we all need or changing the weather or why do we, you know, drive cars that create pollution that we know are taking the ozone or you know, why do we create bombs knowing that it's going to hurt people? So this, it's a study of the human and nature relationship. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. So can you tell me what somatics is? Yeah, somatics, um, Thomas Hanna coined, so I did become a certified Hanna somatic educator and it was kind of dovetailing with this eco-psychology was happening at the same time. Um, I'm in my uh, middle 20s at this point and so somatics, uh, the way that, the simple way of explaining it is is that the mind and the body are one. You know, it's just, science has changed now and I think that we're more of us are understanding that, but at the time, you know, medicine was third person. You know, if you're sick, then you go to somebody else to tell you what's wrong with you and what, what can help you. Somatics means that there's no difference, mind and body are one. And so it's also the experience within so that you as first person can say, oh, I have this ache, aches or, ache or pain, where is this coming from? Um, so, 
That's the brief answer of somatics. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, who else influenced or what else influenced your work? Uh, you mean besides Thomas Hanna and Eleanor Criswell Hanna? Um, well, you know, while I was getting trained at the Novato Institute for research and training um, to get my certification, uh, there is one teacher, senior teacher, his name is Lawrence Gold. Um, he, he was a student of Thomas Hanna and he really developed this work. Um, he's a pioneer in this, in this field right now, so I learned a lot from him. A lot of the, a lot of the exercises uh, actually were inspired by him. And then, and then also um, my colleagues at the Institute, other certified somatic educators, we get together once a year and we practice with each other. Um, of course, my friends. My friends are a huge influence and my students because every time I teach, I'm always learning something. Yes, uh, my current, one of my current teachers, Tony Petrinovich, um, is very dear to me uh, because I'm starting to learn more about quantum physics and I'm learning more about the energy body and the, um, how to incorporate those teachings. You know, when we're relaxed in yoga and we're in contact with a deeper peace, then we start experiencing more consciousness. And so I have a passion to learn more about consciousness and how to use consciousness to create our lives. And uh, so Tony, yeah, she's really influencing me right now how to uh, teach this to others through my yoga. That's beautiful. I, want to, I went to your website and I see that you're also a designer, interior, exterior. Uh, tell me more about that. Um, it's making me smile because I know a lot of people, when they find, whether they find me through an interior designer or whether they find me, find me through the healing work that I do, this question comes up. Um, when I was getting my, uh, my body-oriented psychotherapy certification, because um, I'm, I'm a, a therapist, a psychotherapist, I took a break for your sabbatical and I was really interested in, actually what happened was people would come into my spaces, my interior spaces, and eventually people would say, you know, my offices or my wellness centers, and they would say, gosh, will you come to my house? You know, I really like the way that you have a flair for design. So that's actually how it started was going to my clients' homes. Uh, but for those four years that I was doing that training, I um, started up a landscaping company and went right away into high-end, beautiful, you know, I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So, um, and then from there I moved to Denver and I, I hooked, I um, started working with an architect. Her name is Susan Cheek. And she and I formed companies. She was an amazing, talented architect. And I came with a landscaping background. And I started merging disciplines. So she taught me how to do drawings. And then I started going into people's homes and doing plants. And it just started, it really became very natural to me. And so to this day, I like to um, design sacred spaces, both indoors and outdoors. And I travel, like I was just in Denver a few weeks ago. Um, I'm also a feng shui uh, consultant, so it, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I love expressing through creating beauty, and I also believe that beauty has as much influence as any of these other things that I do. Um, I don't know if you experience that when you walk into a beautiful home, and you're just like, wow, something's affecting me, and I feel so good. Uh, so, and I don't know what it is. And I don't know what it is, and what they all have in common, what they all have in common for me is about how to bring harmony and balance Either it's to our physical body, or to our mind, or our spirit, or also our spaces. That's what they all have in common for me, is uh, balance, yeah, balance and harmony. Beautiful. So where can people find you if they want to work with you? Uh, well, I, right now, I'm starting to have more of a global presence. I do have offices where I see people one-on-one, um, -on -one, but I'm really dovetailing more into leading workshops and uh, uh, teachers' trainings. Um, and my favorite new thing that's coming up is leading retreats to exotic places around the world where people can come and do somatic yoga and learn to meditate and really like-minded people experiencing more of the modern day yoga lifestyle. Um, so yeah, they can go to my website, uh, gentlesomaticyoga.com and see my schedule and sign up for my classes and, and come and see me in person. Um, that's a great question. Um, uh, as I was hinting with, uh, with my interest in consciousness, I really believe, and through my own experience and through my friends, um, 
that we have such a capacity to do so much more um, than, you know, we have, we, culturally we have limiting beliefs and images that keep us more in of a third dimension perspective. And I'm starting to open up to the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension in practical terms, you know, using science um, as a way to create um, an understanding, but then take it into spontaneous healing, um, you know, creating conscious communities in which there's uh, more sustainable um, platforms to create more healthful living. Um, and I, wanna, I want to collaborate with other healing communities and other brilliant minds, um, maybe even go into politics and help create more peaceful, you know, I really feel like I'm inspired to end this concept of duality and to really show that, that it's much more efficient for unity consciousness. And what can we create as a community? Um, so I can see myself expanding like that. James, what you're doing is wonderful and I'm sure the world is grateful to know more about you. People who are watching this video get to learn about what brought you to the point where you are right now and what your vision is for the future. And I want to hold that vision with you. I want to thank you very mm. much for this interview today. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful to talk with you today. I really appreciate your warm and generous heart to, um, to help me uh, express myself like this. So thank you. Pleasure.